Hi everyone. Do you fancy sending your program into space? I am Rebecca Franks from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I am going to step you through the whole process so that you can join the thousands of young people that have already sent their programs to a Raspberry Pi computer on the International Space Station. How cool is that? And remember, we have a Mission Zero how-to guide that has been translated into over 20 languages on www.astro-pi.org. You can head on over there to learn more. Right, let's get started. To get started, you need to go to the astro-pi.org website. Then scroll down and you will see the link to the Mission Zero page. Now you're on the Mission Zero page, you need to scroll down again and find where it says Mentors Register for Mission Zero and receive a classroom code. Click on that link. If you aren't logged in, you'll be prompted to. If you don't have an account, then you will need to register as well at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And then you'll be asked some data processing questions and you agree to those um, as you would like to. Then click Next and then answer the questions about have you been a mentor in the U european astro Pi challenge before and how did you hear about us so it might have been social media for example then click next the next option is all about your address now if you're a school or organization then you're going to want to put your school or organization information here if you're a parent or carer then you can put your home address and home details on this page so I'm just going to put the Raspberry Pi Foundation's um, address here, uh, 37 Hills Road, and we are in Cambridge. And our postcode is CB21NT. And our country is the United Kingdom. And then the telephone number is really, really important. It's essential in case we need to send you anything at all. And you must make sure that you put your country code on there, depending on which country you are from. Now, in the UK, the country code is 44. And we've got the Raspberry Pi telephone number there. So now I'm going to click next. Oh, I've got a little error because I have missed out the town or village so I'm just going to put that in now and then I'm going to click next. There we go. So which mission would you like to work on today? Well, I would like to work on the Mission Zero mission. So I'm going to click on that one. And it asks about the venue details. So in what setting am I doing this Raspberry Pi Mission Zero challenge? So take a look at all the different options and select the one that is most appropriate to you. So if it's other, then you can put that in. Or if it's at a code club, for example, then that is what you would select. So then we click continue. So now I am registered. My teams are registered and this is my personal code. So please do not use my personal code because it won't be relevant to you at all. Um, so that is my personal code that I give to my teams for them to use when they submit their submissions. And you'll be able to see how we do that later in the video. You've got some coding to do before you can make a submission to Mission Zero. Your program will tell the AstroPi computers in space to sense the colour luminosity in the space station and use it as a background colour for an image that you have designed. Your image should reflect something in nature, like a plant or an animal. My image is going to be of a chameleon because chameleons adapt their colour to their surroundings. A bit like this project will in space. You should spend a little bit of time thinking about what image you would like to display. Keep your idea simple. You'll find out why shortly. To get started with your coding, you're going to need to find the Mission Zero starter project. And you can find this on the Mission Zero website. Here you'll find our handy step-by-step -step guide, which recaps everything that I'm going to cover in this video. So, to find the starter project, click on that step-by-step -step guide. And then this is the guide. So now we just need to click on display an image. And next, scroll down a little bit and you'll see open the Mission Zero starter project. 
And now you can see in front of you our Mission Zero starter project so that we can start to get coding. Take a look at the starter project. You will see that some lines of code have already been placed in there for you. This imports the libraries that you're going to need for your program. It sets up the sense hat so that it displays the image correctly in space. And it sets up the colour sensor, which you're going to be using in your programme. These lines of code are really important, so please don't delete them. Take a look at the right hand side of your screen. You will see the Astro Pi computer emulator. On the Astro Pi computer, there is an LED matrix, which is an 8 by 8 grid of LEDs. You will light up these LEDs to generate your picture. In our handy step-by-step -step guide, there are some code snippets that you can use to draw six different animals. If you are struggling for an idea, or if you just want a little bit of help with the code, then you can come here to copy and paste it. So if you wanted to choose the chicken, for example, you can see what it's going to look like on your LED matrix, and then you can find the code here to copy and paste. I already have my chameleon code here ready to use. Now, what I need to do is go down to here where it says add color variables and image. This is where you need to paste your image code. Now, I'm going to leave a couple of spaces because I like to have little bits of space in my code, and then I'm going to paste it in here. Now, just scroll down a little bit so that you can see what's happened. So first of all, I've got my background colour, which is actually going to be black. And then I've got my chameleon colour, which, which is going to be forest green. So that's me choosing my colours there. Next, I've got this grid of all these different letters separated by commas. And if you look really, really closely, you might actually be able to see where those seeds are and how it's making a picture of a chameleon. It'll make more sense in a minute when you see it. Notice that the two colours I've chosen are made up of three different numbers. The first value is to do with the red, how much red's going to be used. The second value is how much green is going to be used. And the third value is how much blue is going to be used. This colour is black, which means I don't want to use any red, blue, green or blue in my picture. But then this one to make forest green uses different levels of those red, green and blue colours. Now, my picture only has two colours, but you can use as many as you like. When you draw your own image, you're going to need to use an 8x8 grid just like this one. Make sure that your syntax is correct. So you want to call it image with an equal sign and then notice that there is a square bracket at the beginning and there is also a square bracket by the end. And each of these letters that are used for your colours are separated by a comma. These things are really, really important to get it right. So I've picked my colours and I've got my image there. So if I press run, do you think it's going to work? Let's have a look. So I'll press run, I scroll up, oh, it's just black. Mm, it's not displaying my image at the moment. I need a bit of code that tells the display to display my image. Find the comment that says display the image and enter this piece of code. So it says sense dot set underscore pixels and then in brackets image. And this is the image that you have drawn up here. So now, hopefully, fingers crossed, when I press run, my chameleon image is going to appear on the Astro Pi computer. So I'm gonna press run, scroll up, yay, there it is. So my chameleon is working. Now your project might not work properly the first time, and that's absolutely fine. This is all part of the coding experience. So for example, you might miss out a comma in your grid and then when you press run you, you'll go up there and you'll see syntax error bad input on line 19 so then you can go to line 19 and you can think oh what's wrong ah it's my comma I'm going to put that back in whoops and then if I press run again I've now 
fix that. I'm not getting an error anymore. You might also do something like spell sense incorrectly. So if I run that now and then I just scroll up there, you can see name error, name sense is not defined. So I know I've probably spelt something incorrectly somewhere along the line and I can find that here and I can make a, cor a, a correction. So it's all about reading those error messages and trying to figure out where your code has gone wrong. And remember, we've got those handy code snippets for you to check against in our step by step guide if you are struggling with your code. Once your image is displaying correctly, you are ready to move on. Now, at the moment, my image has a black background. But what I want to do is use the AstroPi computer's color luminosity sensor. It'll detect the color in the environment, and then I will use a bit of code to replicate that color as the background on the LED matrix. To do this, I need to start off by adding this piece of code above my background color. So again, just make a little bit of room and then paste it in. Now, with all these code snippets, you don't actually need to use these things where there's a little hashtag and a bit of writing, because these are comments just to help explain what the code is doing. So if you're typing all this out by hand, don't worry, you can just put RGB equals sense dot color. And notice that we're using the American spelling because that is what the Python library uses. You now need to change the code for your background colour so that it uses the colour sensed by the colour luminosity sensor. You do this by going to that first value and instead of it being zero or whatever value you have there, you can change it to RGB, which is the name of this variable here, dot red, because that's the red value. And then we have RGB dot green. And then the final one, you replace that with RGB dot blue, because that's the red value, the green value, and the blue value. So now let's see what happens when I run my code. Oh, wow. So now my background is pink. Take a look down here. This is our simulation of the color luminosity sensor. So what you can do is you can change that to a different color. So, oh, actually, green is a bit too close to my chameleon. I might go for red. So we can change it to red and then just click off and then press run again. And then my background color is now red. If your program isn't working correctly, then check your code carefully. Have a look and see if it matches mine. So I've got RGB equals sense dot color. And then I've changed my background color to this section of code. So I've got RGB dot red and then a comma, RGB dot green and a comma and RGB dot blue. And this is all inside two brackets. So just double check your code and then try and get rid of those syntax errors. Excellent. You now have an image from nature and it senses the colour on the space station and replicates it on your background. You have one more thing to do. Your program needs to run for 30 seconds or less. You are going to loop your code so that it repeats 28 times. This means that the astronauts on the space station will be able to see your image changing colors slightly depending on the colors sense on the space station while your program is running. Find the line of code in your program that senses the color. You might want to add a line space as well to make a little bit of room and then to add in this piece of code. So it says for I in range and then there's an open bracket and 28 and a closed bracket with a colon on the end. So this is just telling Python to run something 28 times. But at the moment, it doesn't know what that something is. So we have to tab this whole section of code in a little bit so that it sits within that for loop. So what I've done is I've highlighted the whole thing. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to press the tab key. And this pushes everything inside that for loop. 
So now it's going to run everything inside that for loop 28 times. But if I press run, it all happens super quickly. Let's just look at it again. Super quickly. It just flashes really, really quickly. So we need to slow it down a little bit. And we can slow it down using a sleep. So right at the end of my code, making sure I'm still indented, I'm going to use sleep. So sleep one. And that will just, um, it'll run that chunk of code. It'll wait one second. And then it'll run that chunk of code again. And it'll do that 28 times. So now when I press run, it is running 28 times. And if I just scroll up just a little bit so that you can see, when I change the colour now, it should change on the screen, which it is. So this is what will be happening on the space station when your programme is running. How exciting is that? Your programme needs to run for 30 seconds or less. Now, I have run my programme and I have waited and it actually took 29 seconds to run my whole code. That means that when I go down here, I have ticked all four boxes because I haven't got any errors. I've used the color and luminosity sensor. It completes in 30 seconds or less. And I've used the LEDs. So my program is now ready for submission. Take a look at the right hand side here. You can see that it says submit your program with some instructions. This is where you enter the classroom code that either you or your leader will have gathered from the Mission Zero registration page. You then need to think of a name for your team as well and make sure it's unique to your team. And when you're ready, you can press add your team. This will submit your programme for the Mission Zero project. Now, as long as it meets all of our guidelines, it should be heading to space anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best of luck with your submissions. I really hope that you had fun and that you enjoy sending your programme into space. Bye for now.